Hello everybody, my name is Monkey Hardup and welcome to the York Theatre Royal. We're in between performances of Cinderella at the moment so I thought I'd take this opportunity to tell you all about pantomime and how this particular type of theatre came to be. Pantomime has been around for ages, it really has, and it's still going strong today. It's often young children's first experience of live theatre. Taking place at Christmas time, pantomimes are performed in venues ranging in size from village halls to huge theatres. It really is for everyone. But what was the first pantomime? Where did it come from? Why do so many people enjoy watching this nonsense year on year? All these questions and many more will probably not be answered in the following video. So strap yourselves in for a whirlwind tour of the history of pantomime. Back in the 16th century there was a type of theatre in Italy called Commedia dell'arte. In English that means art comedy. Commedia dell'arte. You see, troops of performers would travel all over Italy, stopping off at various towns and villages, and they'd perform their shows. They were always funny and fast-paced and had scenes of people falling over or being hit over the head. What we call slapstick. Slapstick is still a very popular form of comedy. And many film stars in the early days of cinema became very famous performing slapstick in their movies. Being hit in the face with a custard pie, falling over, silly chase scenes, being hit over the head, kicking someone up the bum and dances. All this silly comedy started with the Commedia actors in their shows. While performing their Commedia, some of the characters wore masks, such as these. The characters in the Commedia plays were based on people that we can all recognise. There was Columbine, a young romantic girl, much like Cinderella, Piero, a clown, and Pantalone, a silly old man. Commedia had music and dances, acrobatics, and of course, comedy, just like modern pantos. There was also a character called Punchinello, and he was a servant. Now, he doesn't normally appear in modern pantomimes, but he still exists in the UK as Mr Punch, the puppet in a Punch and Judy show. Maybe you've seen a Punch and Judy show at the park or at the seaside. By the middle of the 17th century, Commedia had spread across the whole of Europe. It really was so popular. When the Italian actors reached Britain, very few of them could speak English, and very few English could speak Italian. So it was a bit of a problem, really. So the Commedia actors started to cut all the dialogue from their performances, leaving just the dances and the songs and the comical chases. In fact, without any dialogue, any words, they were mimed. And that's where the mime part of the word pantomime comes from. In fact, the word pantomime means all kinds of mime. The British adopted this Italian style of comic theatre and it became very popular indeed very quickly. But over the years it evolved and it started incorporating British characters and stories into the performances. By the 18th century, pantomime was flourishing, but a lot of theatre managers thought it was too silly and too frivolous, imagine, and that it could be a threat to all the serious plays that they wished to put on. For that reason, pantomime was only put on at Christmas time. 
but it quickly became associated with all the fun of the festive period. And nowadays, pantomime and Christmas go together like two things that go together really well. In Victorian times, the principal boy was introduced. The principal boy is usually the hero of the story, like Jack in Jack and the Beanstalk, or Aladdin in Aladdin. The principal boy was special because he was played by a girl. There are all sorts of reasons for this, but it was mostly because women in Victorian times had to dress in very large, uncomfortable dresses. Whereas in pantomime, the principal boy wore boys' clothing. It was a chance for the men in the audience to see what a woman's leg looked like. It didn't hurt the ticket sales either. This tradition has lasted to this day, and many pantomimes still have a female principal boy. It was around this time also that pantomime stories started to be based on fairy tales. And nowadays, most pantomimes are based on these sort of stories. Cinderella, Aladdin, Jack and the Beanstalk, Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. In the 1880s, a man called Dan Leno became the first modern pantomime dame. Played by a man, the dame is nearly always poor, funny, and the mother or a relation to the hero or heroine of the story. Widow Twanky is the mother of Aladdin, Dolly Trot is the mother of Jack, Nanny Fanny is the nanny of Sleeping Beauty. Men have played women on stage for centuries. In Shakespeare's day, women weren't allowed on the stage, so all the female roles were played by men, often younger boys whose beards hadn't started to grow yet. Eventually, women were allowed to act in plays, and rightly so, but often the older characters were still played by men as there weren't enough older actresses around, or the younger ones only wanted to play the more glamorous and pretty roles. And so we come to today. Pantomime is going great guns and is often the busiest time of year for most theatres. So do go along and support your local panto, won't you? It doesn't matter if it's the local village hall or one of those large extravagant productions. I promise you, you'll have a great time. Right, I'm having a satsuma.